funders that are funding at a sort of larger budget amounts, uh, institutional funders have their own application template that they require all applicants to use. Um, this is definitely the case with any government funders, um, and but generally speaking, anybody that's uh, not that is a granting body is going to have a standard template that you need to fill out. Last one, which is going to be the most common format that you will encounter, is going to be translating your case for support and your project plan into the format for each individual funder. And each funder is going to structure things differently. Each funder is going to ask questions and have different space constraints. Um, so how do you do that? So the first thing that I would, what I do when I approach a funder template is I take out, I look at the template and I very quickly go through and I code each question to the corresponding part of the case for support or project plan so that you know where you're going to go to get that information. So um, you might write a logic model, you might write a case for support, um, page two, org capacity. So you just sort of make those notes and code it so that you it's clear to you what those questions are really asking so you can provide the information you've already got on file. Next step that I follow is to copy and paste. So as much as possible, you're not recreating anything. You are simply plugging your existing information into the right place in these templates. You then go through the process of tweaking and editing and making sure that you're presenting your project in a way that's going to resonate best with that particular funder. Now, here is where all of your work getting ready to submit proposals, doing all of this work at the initial phase before you start to respond to a call for proposal puts you at a huge advantage because everyone who is not you, <laughs> Everyone who has not done the project building work and the organizational case for support work in advance is going to spend most of their time in that four to six week window that the funder has given you. They're going to spend most of their time on the first two steps. They're going to spend most of their time figuring out what project they're going to propose and building that project. Whereas you, who have already done that work, you can spend four weeks making this proposal perfect for this particular funder. And that puts you at a huge advantage. You can look at what language is the funder using. You can look at policy directives that, are, um, that that funder uses. So if you're applying to a government agency, for example, you can find out what are their policies. You can find out what are their own internal metrics? So what are their overall goals as a funder? And how can you make it clear to them that your project aligns with their own goals and what they're trying to achieve through their funding mechanism? So you can really tailor your presentation of your project to that funder and do that in a really well researched and thoughtful way because you don't have to waste any of your time and thinking on building your project. It also gives you lots of time to identify any gaps. So whether there are any particular questions that this funder is asking that are unique that you don't already have in your case for support. And you can spend time providing really thoughtful answers to those pieces and filling in those gaps. You can also then spend your time consulting with stakeholders um, because you have more time now uh, during the proposal writing process where there are gaps or things that you need to tweak slightly. You can do that in a way that is cons consultative, in a way that is participatory, in a way that is really generating input and responding to um, the input from your local stakeholders and from your communities and beneficiaries. And again, you can do that because you have the time and you're not going to be rushed filling in a gap two days before the proposals due, because it took you that long to build the project, right? I would also say that anything that you add to your project design or to your, your narrative, 
um, in response to a particular funder's question, keep that on file because you never know when it's going to come up again. And now you again have a more robust plan um, that's ready for um, applying for funds elsewhere if need be. Same thing with the budget. Um, your process, if you've got a, your budget laid out, especially in Excel, obviously we would use Excel for our budgets, it's really easy to map that out and just to use um, a simple calculation to roll up your budget into whatever format that, that uh, particular funder is looking for and it doesn't take a lot of work. So that again is something that we can um, review and the subsequent training training when we look at the project builder tool that excel file actually has a piece built in that enables you to do that quickly and easily and this is the process that we'll use but we'll we'll go through this in detail as we're looking at that tool later that was it um, but anyway, so I hope that sort of the key message, uh, again, as I mentioned at the beginning, that I really want to drive home is that your success in writing proposals is really about the work that you do before you start writing proposals. And the more thought and effort and um, that you put into the design phase and to really having a clear clearly articulated case for support about who you are as an entity, um, you're going to be well positioned to apply for any funding opportunity that comes around and you're going to be at an advantage to be able to respond quickly. You know, when you've got only a week to pull off a proposal, it's an insurmountable goal if you don't already know what the project looks like. But a week it's fine. If you've already got all the pieces in place, a week is plenty. Won't allow you to do maybe the consultations piece um, as well as you might like, but um, regardless of the funder's timeline, you're going to be able to respond to proposals in a way that is very um, efficient and um, timely because you've done so much groundwork. And the good news is, is that the funders will know that you've done this work it will come through in the way you respond to questions in their template and they will be able to tell that you've done that homework if compared to a proposal where the applicant has not and that's going to really strengthen the odds of you of you getting funded because it'll make the funder more confident um, that you've thought through all the variables and you're most likely to be able to make good on your promises and achieve the results that you've set out to achieve Thank you.